Rebecca and welcome to the Carriage House, a place where you can find comfort and cozy inspiration for your hearth and home. On the spring afternoon, I decided to make a homemade rhubarb crisp. The rhubarb is always beautiful this time of year and it's always quite abundant. I love the beautiful combination as well as the striking difference between the bright ruby red of the stalks and the dark forest green of the leaves. I always try to remind myself that beauty can be captured in the everyday mundane and it can certainly happen unexpectedly. Whether it be harvesting fruits and vegetables in your garden, looking out your window while washing dishes, or simply just lighting a candle. It's those moments that create an inner stillness in our lives and it's those moments, if we're not careful, can pass us by too quickly. And this is a recipe that I've been using for quite some time now. It's very simple and can even be calming to make. For the filling, I simply chop about eight or so of fresh rhubarb that's been rinsed. And then I add one cup of sugar. Now I've always used plain white sugar or cane sugar for this recipe, but a very dear subscriber, Allie, recommended me trying out monk sugar. And I tried it for the first time last year and loved it. And then I add three tablespoons of baking soda and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And then for the crisp topping, I use one cup of gluten-free oats, a half a cup of brown sugar that's been packed, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a fourth a cup of cold unsalted butter that's been cut into small cubes. Then I pour the crisp topping over the beautiful tart and sweetened rhubarb and then I'll bake it into a 375 degree oven until the top is lightly golden and bubbly.
After I tidied up the house a little, it was time to start thinking about making dinner. So I decided to make garlic and herb meatballs with basmati rice and freshly steamed broccoli. I borrowed this recipe from Pepper and Pine, and my daughter, who has celiac disease, loves these so much. Plus, my three boys and husband loves them too, so I try to make them often. And I start preparing dinner a little early so I don't have to rush through it. And even though it gets very crazy around here sometimes, the kitchen is the heart of this home, a place where we all gather, a place where we nourish and sustain ourselves, and a place where we love and connect with one another. <laughs>